eclipses. As we talked about the moon orbiting the earth, we saw that there are times when the earth, the moon, and the sun appear to be in alignment. Well, when things are perfect is when we will get an eclipse. And there are two types of eclipses. First is called a lunar eclipse, and this is when the moon passes into Earth's shadow. And so here on the diagram you can see here's the sun shining on the Earth, here's Earth's shadow out into space, and here's the moon. So based on this alignment with the sun on one side of the Earth and the moon directly opposite, we see that lunar eclipses occur only during full moon. Here we see what the view looks like out into space. Earth's shadow actually has two parts, an outer part that's very faint. It's when the moon goes into this darker part of the shadow that we actually notice a lunar eclipse. Solar eclipse occurs when the moon blocks the sun. And so here on our diagram we've got the moon in between the earth and the sun and it's the moon's shadow cast onto earth that we actually experience the solar eclipse. And because of this arrangement this is only during new moon. So those are our two types of eclipses. Well of course full moon occurs once a month, new moon occurs once a month. Why don't we get eclipses once a month? That's because the moon's orbit is tilted. And the nodes are kind of the pivot points of that tilt. And so that's the part where things will line up. So in this image here, at the top, we see the tilt of the moon's orbit. And that tilt orientation stays the same as it goes around the Earth and as Earth goes around the Sun. So most of the time, it's like this. Uh, the new moon casts a shadow that's above the Earth, or the Earth casts a shadow that's above the moon, or uh, new moon is too low and full moon is too high. But here, if the moon is on a node, then things line up and you have the chance for the shadow to actually hit the Earth, or if the full moon is on the node, then you have a chance for Earth's shadow to hit the moon. So you can have a maximum of two solar eclipses and two lunar eclipses per year. Most of the time you don't get two of each um, because you know, not only does the moon need to be on the node, it needs to be the right phase as it's on the node. So basically these two positions are the two times in the year that you can get a lunar eclipse and a solar eclipse, but uh, the moon needs to be the right phase and you need to be on the right part of the earth to see it. So it actually gets much more rare than that. Within eclipses, there are two flavors of eclipse. A total eclipse is when everything lines up perfectly. So you have the moon 
completely covered with Earth's shadow. I know the picture looks like there's a little bit of light on one side, but that's actually just uh, near the edge of the shadow, but it's still in Earth's shadow. Or the sun is completely covered by the moon. And when that happens, you can see this outer part of the sun's atmosphere called the corona, which you don't normally see because that's a much lighter part than the surface of the sun. So the sun just completely overwhelms our view of that. So it's only during a total solar eclipse that you get to see that part of the sun without special equipment or going into space and things like that. The other is called a partial eclipse. So it is not aligned perfectly. So things are only partially covered. So here we have a partial solar eclipse. And here we see a partial lunar eclipse. Now lunar eclipses are more common to see because of the fact that uh, as long as you are on the right side of the Earth, you can see it. Solar eclipses are much rarer because you have to be exactly underneath the moon's shadow to see a solar eclipse. I'm recording this in August of 2014 and I'm looking at a list of upcoming lunar eclipses visible from North America. So one's coming up that are visible from North America October 8th, 2014 April 4th, 2015, September 28th, 2015. So here we've got a case where we've got, and we had a lunar eclipse in uh, April of 2014. 2014 we had two lunar eclipses visible. 2015 we've got two lunar eclipses visible. That's unusual, and those are both total. Uh, let's see. Western North America, that doesn't really help. South America. Uh, the next one that the Americas will see is January 21st, 2019. Oops, sorry about that. So we've got a little gap in there. Then. Uh, this list goes up through 2020. After that, there's a partial, but we won't see it, and a number of the penumbrals when it goes into the uh, outer part of the shadow, which isn't that spectacular. So between now and 2020, these are the total lunar eclipses visible from North America. Similarly, we can look at upcoming solar eclipses. Now here, I'm going to include partials because otherwise it's going to be a very short list. Uh, we've got a partial visible from uh, parts of North America, October 23rd, 2014. And so that's associated with that October uh, lunar eclipse. So both of those are uh, close enough to the nodes that we get uh, a little bit of something. Uh, let's see, the next one is in 2015, but you need to be in Iceland, Europe, Northern Africa, and Northern Asia. Uh, another one in 2015 is partial, but you need to be in Africa, India, or Antarctica, so that doesn't sound too possible. 
Got a total in 2016 in March, Asia, Australia, and in the Pacific. Uh, September of 2016 is an annular, where it actually, uh, the moon is a little bit farther from the Earth, so it doesn't completely cover the sun. So the moon is in the middle, and you get this little ring of light around it. And that's called an annular eclipse, because the word annulus means ring. And so, uh, again, not visible from North America. That one's Africa, the Indian Ocean. Another annular for South America, uh, the Atlantic Ocean, Africa, Antarctica. And then we've got August 21st, 2017. This is a total solar eclipse visible from North America. And for those of us here in East Tennessee, um, Tri-Cities, it's going to be um, over 90% covered. South of Knoxville, it's going to be a total. Nashville is going to see a total. So this one is worth traveling a little bit to see uh, that eclipse. Uh, let's see, anything else for North America on the list? No. So up through December of 2020, these are our two solar eclipse options, a partial in October of this year, and then the total solar eclipse in August of 2017. So uh, mark your calendars. I've been talking about this one for about 20 years and uh, the fact that it is going to be close to where we are here in Tennessee it's definitely worth going out and taking a look it's also going to pass through um, Illinois and some other places now there is another total one I think it comes a couple years after 2020 that will also pass through uh, North America and through Illinois and there's one city, Carbondale, Illinois, and I know this because I have a friend from that area, that will see both total eclipses. So if you happen to be in Carbondale or know somebody there, uh, hit them up for some eclipse housing for these two upcoming total solar eclipses. So those are eclipses.